Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we have one of the rarest television pilots ever made. It was made for a series that was not picked up. This is the only known existing episode, and it stars one of the biggest TV stars ever. It stars the man that brought to life on screen Davy Crockett and created the coonskin cap craze of the 1950s. And Daniel Boone from the 1960s television series, Daniel Boone. Of course, I'm speaking about Fess Parker. And in this series, he was set to portray another real life person from the Old West, somebody very famous, but someone you wouldn't really think would have a TV series about him. The title of this series is Russell. It stars Fess Parker, Beverly Garland, J.C. Flippin, and Paul Carr. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this, and we'll see you after the show. back at you, kid. Smoke? My name is Blue. Fast Gun Tracy Blue. You try to remember that, Mr. Uh... Russell. Just plain Charlie Russell. Yeah. Better watch them close or they'll hightail it. We've got a spooky herd. Yeah. What spooked them? I asked a few, but they wouldn't tell me. Could be on account of we're close to the stage road. Well, I'll take over now. Good night. I said I'd take over now. out of business. Where's the others? A bunch in the herd down the draw. They had them stopped when I came by. When you came by? Where was you? What started running them cows anyhow? Didn't I hear gunshots up there? 
Oh, not again, Charlie. Now, look, don't you go messing up this new cover. There's a lot of old scraps in the wagon. They're too small. I've got a big idea. You think maybe Hayden will pay uh, two bottles of whiskey? For this? Hayden won't pay nothing. He sold a hotel. Who told you? Woman had bought it. We was riding together last night. We've been together ten years, but I knew it had happened. Night wranglers and coyotes go crazy under a full moon. You just wait there. I'll bring you a cup of coffee. Look, Charlie. There couldn't be no woman. And if there was a woman, where would she be when you saw her? On the stage, heading for Cascade. Only was held up by three men. Is this one of your jokes? Well, if I didn't see it, I couldn't paint it. Is that there what you saw? You, uh, think it'd be a reward? I hadn't thought much about that. That's because you ain't no businessman, Charlie. And that's why you need me around. Now, we don't have to say nothing about them three men. And we split the reward. Me and you. Better not spend it till we catch them. That may take some doing. Put that stuff away. And don't you say nothing about that holdup. Wheat in that coffee? We've got a man here going crazy on it. What's he been doing? I'm not crazy. I'm telling you what's true. There were three men robbing a stage, and I saw it. Full moon will do it every time. Which way'd they go? Well, they, uh, they scramble up in them rocks. Got away from me. Yeah, that's the night dragon. He didn't see no hold up. Well, you let him tell me that. Tell you what, kid. Lou claims that you were with them when they started running. What were you doing? Trying to keep ahead of the cows. You better tell them the truth. Nobody makes a fool out of me. Nobody can make a fool out of you, kid. You got to do that yourself. Right now, you're making a real good try at it. Don't try it. You're crowding one of the fastest guns in this outfit. And one of the nicest people. All right, now we quick. Let's get the herd down the basin. Do it before noon. You got the rest of the day in Cascade. You had me worried. Thought you was going to tell him about the holdup. I was going to tell him, but when the kid shot off his mouth, I decided to close mine. Getting laughed at may help him a little. I mean, ain't nothing going to help him. Ever since he's been an orphan, he's been pushing that gun, trying to be big. Orphan? Yeah. Old Ned Blue and his wife. The Cheyenne's got him. Since then, young Tracy's been drifting around. Getting feistier all the time. I didn't help any. sleep before we ride out again. We ain't riding nowhere. Now we're heading on the stagecoach. In the meantime, we just work the count. Well, it be, gentlemen. What do you got for sale? Whiskey and water. Both cost the same. Two bits of shot. Peter. 
Pete last night. <laughs> oh, what a ride. You heard what she said? I told you that he ran off of me. Well, I can't say as a blame him. How far'd you go, Charlie? How far can a man go on a horse? <laughs> now, do you believe me? I told you there were three men holding up that stage last night. I drove him off, and he rode out with that woman. Now, you tell him why. Well, that's easy, kid. I'm prettier than you. <laughs> How about that holdup? He's telling you the truth. There, there was three men, and he drove them off alone. And like he says, I just rode out fast. Well, they looked like Charlie. Well, they looked like they had neckerchiefs over their face and three big guns. I'd say you owe the kid a drink. And I'll win him an apology. That's fair enough. I'll catch the first round. <laughs> well, now who's going to catch the second? Uh, how you fixed, Wendy? Well, I was figuring on credit. My face was always good enough for Hayden. Well, it ain't good enough for me. Now, look, I paid cash for this place, and I need cash if I'm going to fix it up so a lady can live in it. Now, who's got the money? Well, uh, how much fixing are you doing? I'm fixing me a sitting room. Well, uh, could you maybe use a nice picture to go with your sitting room? Well, what's it look like? Well, Hayden paid $10 for that one, and $10 for that one over yonder. Ain't it pretty? Did you paint them? Well, I helped. Of course, mostly I make the deals. Like a bottle of whiskey in advance. When I get the picture, you get the bottle. But until then, you can find yourself another saloon. Now, 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 hold everything, lady. Hold everything. I got the picture. Now, you just hold it. I come back. I'll fetch it. Stick around, Charlie. The house owes you a couple of drinks for that um, ride. I thought there was only one. I saw the kid, that's all. I think we should be moving on. I don't. I got it! <laughs> Where's the bottle? Well, you crazy ape, that was a new wagon cover. What'd you cut into it for? For a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Look. And that's you. That's you, right there. Why? Well, that's me, sure enough. <laughs> what? There's my blue skirt, my new red coat, and you can even see my hat. Well, well now, look, when are you going to finish the picture? Oh, uh, my partner does that. Ask Charlie. Oh, you forgot to tell me that you paint pictures. Well, they ain't much. And it was kind of busy when we met. I'll show you my sitting room. And then you know how to finish the picture. How much do you think they saw? That picture, I'd say they saw too much. That's where I want the picture. Right there, over the sofa. Sofa? The one that's going to be there when I buy it. You know, red velvet. It's going to go nice with the picture. When do you want it? When can I get it? I wouldn't know exactly. Little ones I can do quick. Big ones take longer. Well, now, look. Don't go filling up the whole wall because uh, I'm going to use expensive wallpaper. So why don't you make it a little... Well, I'd like to. We've got a roundup going on in the basin. Twenty or thirty outfits. And I'm night wrangler. So I'll be busy at night keeping horses bunched. What happens in the daytime? You and Blue to work the draw. Where is he? Picking up a new bronc for himself. But I don't work with this kid, Turpin. Oh. Why not? He's gun happy, that's why. 
He wanted to shoot it out with the Dutchman this morning. Uh, just because I laugh when he tells me somebody tried to shoot at him up in the drawer. Could be somebody did shoot at him. There's more than 100 men working in the basin, some we never seen before. Maybe three of them saw the kid when they were holding up the stage. <laughs> What happened, kid? <laughs> Did somebody shoot you out of that saddle? <laughs> you know, you've been asking for it. Anytime you're ready. I don't need you to side me. I'm not siding you, kid. Just telling you. In a family quarrel, a big man uses his hands. A little man needs a gun. Right now, kid, you look real small. Yeah, well, he's not small enough to suit me. Break it up. We're going to wind this round up, but there'll be no payoff in Cascade tonight. So start cutting calves. And as for you, there's a couple of cows drifted back up in the drawer. So if you want to use this gun, go smoke them out. <laughs> Ain't nobody took no shot at him. Well, I wouldn't say that, Wendy. Somebody took a shot at me last night. Did you get to shoot back? Couldn't see nothing to shoot at. But you can bet I rode tight in on them horses the rest of the night. Trying to spread my cotton? I could use a little sleep. I wish you would. Stop using all my dough for your statue. Get yourself about five hours. Then me and you will ride in the cascade ahead of the boys. We got ten dollars and a bottle of whiskey coming when that picture's finished. You know, you spit that whiskey with those scalp folks. working up there. Maybe he's getting fresh. He wouldn't be using a rifle. Now don't you go getting yourself killed, Charlie. You gotta finish that picture. Or we don't get paid. Anybody riding up behind me? You see him? Not exactly. I saw some brush moving against the wind. See that from here? That ain't important, kid. Can he see us from there? Let's go down. That wouldn't do any good by the time we circled around. He'd be gone. Let's move over to high ground over there. Not with that rifle shooting at us. Stay put. Well, you can stay put if you want to, but I'm going after him. Don't do it, kid! Tell me I was wrong. Tell me I almost got you killed. Go on. Wouldn't do any good, kid. You don't listen when people talk. Now, I don't see you got any right to talk to me like that. Well, maybe you can see this. Oh, Miss Bonnie, I've 
brought Charlie so we can finish that picture. Now, if you'll just break out the bottle, we'll get started. Now, slow down, Wendy. I'm in no hurry. And, uh, it is Charlie. Why, it might take him another month to, uh, finish his work. Another month? Look, lady, I'm getting out of here tomorrow. Ain't you heard? The roundup's over. Pretty soon this place will be crowded with riders. I don't want them drinking my whiskey. Payday, let them buy their own. Yeah, but they like to drink mine. Now, you go ahead and start finishing that picture. Well, what all you got there? That's something I saw in a mail order catalog. I had the carpenter bill one for Charlie. Well, now, ain't that something? <laughs> Looks like a teepee frame for a small Indian. You been working on that, Charlie? I wrote in a time or two. But you were busy, so uh, I didn't invite you. Oh, and drunk up my whiskey, huh? Oh, now, you know that's not true. There's plenty behind the bar. Help yourself. Well, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I will. About that sitting room of mine, um, they could use another picture. Well, I'd pay maybe $20. Sorry. I won't be here. Well, if you stay, I I'll cut you in on this place. I really need a man to work the bar. Be much good behind the bar. Well, I could teach you. Meanwhile, you'd, you'd have a bed and meals and a and a roof that doesn't leak. Mine only leaks when it rains. It's got such pretty lamps to light it. But you wouldn't know about that. You wouldn't know what it's like to sleep out on the open prairie. Look up at a summer sky that's so full of stars they crowd you a little. At night, when you're riding herd, you can watch them bed down under that same summer moon. And when winter comes? There's deer in the hills, or elk, or antelope, maybe. Winter goes quick. And soon it's springtime. God spreads a blanket of flowers all over the prairie. Cattle grow fat. Springtime's a good time. At night when a man spreads his cotton, sleep comes quick and easy. I wouldn't be much good behind the bar. Russell. I do. You back my play. Take care of the kid. I'll take a bottle of whiskey. Hey, Bonnie! You better bring out some more whiskey. Here comes the rest of my outfit. My crown, yeah? There ain't too many horses in this country carrying that brand. This one was carrying. Now, if he was holding a gun instead of a brush, I'd call you a liar. I got mine between the eyes. They're supposed to be so good with a gun. Now, why didn't you? What he did with his thumb, I can fix with a brush. What you did with your thumb, nobody can fix. Got $200 coming from him, Bonnie. I'll work on this next time I'm passing through. Needs a lot of fixing. Don't let 
me stop you. I was just... You're just doing what I did the first time I killed a man. That's why I try not to kill anymore. I can help it. Picked up your wages. Thought maybe you might be riding on. Like I am. Uh, which way are you riding? You name it, kid. He's making a man out of a kid. And when he's done, he'll come back and finish your picture. Charlie did finish the picture. It is known as Innocent Allies and hangs today in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Gilcrease Institute of American History and Art. It is not for sale, but is part of a collection valued at $12 million. Charlie simply wouldn't believe that, nor could he understand his place in the Hall of Fame as one of our country's greatest painters and a great American. seen one episode from the personal story of Charles M. Russell, artist, sculptor, writer, and cowboy. The West was his life. He was part of its laughter, seated here at the chuck wagon while a cook threatens and a Bronx scatters the breakfast. He saw the bull teams hauling supplies past Fort Benton with their dusty whackers swinging 16-foot lashes. He roared into town with the trail drivers on payday and roared out through the smoke of a 45. The open range was his world as he worked the pack trains when mules wore diamonds. He watched the law come calling, and he saw men die. He was a good man with a rifle, fast with a rope, and dangerous with a six-gun or a woman. Today, many of these masterpieces will provide stories for this series. The truth of the Old West, as Charlie Russell saw it, knew it, and lived it. As his good friend Will Rogers said, Charlie Russell not only left us with great living pictures of what our West was, but he left us an example of how to live in friendship with all mankind. A real, downright, honest-to-God human being. This is the Russell that Will Rogers knew. This is the Russell we will portray. The magnificent Bess Parker portraying Western art legend, Charlie Russell. Who could have imagined that? What a great concept for a series. It's too bad it didn't take off. You know, after Fest retired from acting, he spent much of his time with his family winery and vineyard. They have several award-winning wines, and the labels have a golden coonskin cap. The winery is now ran by 
Fess's family. At the end of this, you saw the marketing promo for potential sponsors by Frank Baxter. Too bad this series wasn't picked up. It would have been a good one. But of course, if it had been, we probably wouldn't have gotten to see Daniel Boone. My name's Bob Terry. We hope you'll join us again here next time for the Forsaken Westerns. Have a great day.